Let us talk about juvenile justice rehabilitation and reformation programs. Viewed from a contemporary perspective, the juvenile justice system has three complementary goals. First is the promoting of accountability. Second, the preventing of reoffending. And third is the treating of youth fairly, each of which is served by a rehabilitative orientation. Promoting accountability refers to the process of inculcating and reinforcing norms of personal responsibility, thereby helping to foster adolescents' healthy moral development and socialization and satisfying society's expectations that corrective action will be taken in response to wrongdoing. Reducing the occurrence of reoffending re is a distinct objective of juvenile justice, but it is also the most concrete measure of whether adolescents who have come to the attention of the juvenile justice system have embraced a law-abiding way of life. Two professionals in the juvenile justice system, namely Melvin and Dodulia, believe that getting the young ones on the right track is the most important step in the juvenile justice system and hence to those who are intent upon a life of crime, juvenile justice system is the last stop. The juvenile justice system is a network of a government and private services that deal with matters involving children. Children are defined under Republic Act 9344 as those who are below 18 years of age. The major juvenile services are the police, the juvenile courts, and corrections. Each of these services has its own role. The police identify the delinquency and decide how it is to be handled, whereas the correction tries to change the child's behavior. Juvenile correction is actually a juvenile treatment consisting of a variety of activities that in effect treat young offenders for the purpose of rehabilitation. The concept of using treatment and the relationship between juvenile corrections and juvenile justice system is clear from the words of Samuel Slavson. Our juvenile laws are founded on the ideal that children should receive from the state care, training, and treatment all designed to rehabilitate them and prepare them for adulthood. In 2006, the Philippines adopted the Juvenile Justice and Welfare, Welfare Bill, known as the Republic Act 9344, which adhered to many of the provisions outlined in international agreements, such as the United Nations Convention on the Rights of the Child, the UN Standard Minimum Rules for the Administration of Juvenile Justice, the UN Guidelines for the Prevention of Juvenile Delinquency, and the UN Rules for the protection of juvenile deprived of liberty. Republic Act 9344 and its amendment, Republic Act 10630, established a comprehensive juvenile justice and welfare system in the Philippines. Under this, the implementation of the new features of the juvenile justice system, one of which was the introduction of the concept of restorative justice and diversion. Under this new juvenile justice system, the existing government-run, center-based rehabilitation programs were further strengthened and several community-based diversion programs were instituted for the purpose of social integration of children in conflict with the law. These interventions include, but are not limited to, the regional rehabilitation centers for youth operated by the DSWD, the Bahay Pag-asa facilities established by local government established by local government units and the community-based diversion programs. The Regional Rehabilitation Center for Youth refers to a 24-hour residential care facility administered by the DSWD that provides CICL with care treatment, and rehabilitation services under the guidance of trained staff. For CICL on suspended sentence or residents 
are cared are cared for under a structured therapeutic environment with the end view of reintegrating them in their families and communities as productive and social functioning individuals. The Bahay Pag-asa refers to LGU-run facilities that provide care to CICL with pending cases or awaiting trial and immediate assistance to apprehended children who could not be instantly returned to their parents or guardians after release by arresting officers. The community-based programs refers to the programs provided in a community setting and developed for the purpose of intervention and diversion, as well as the rehabilitation of CICL for reintegration into their families and community. The diversion program is another response to criticisms about the conditions confronting CICL detained in prison. According to UNICEF, of the 4,000 children imprisoned as of the end of 2005, most of them were charged with minor crimes. Under the Juvenile Justice Welfare Act, children under the age of 15 cannot be charged with a crime. For juveniles above 15 under above 15 but under 18 they are subject to criminal liability only if they acted with discernment they may undergo diversion programs conducted at the local level law enforcement level or prosecution level if the offense is punishable by not more than six years of imprisonment however if the offense is punishable by not more than 12 years Diversion may only be rescued or may only be resorted to by the court. The Juvenile Justice Welfare Act also provides that diversion programs should be community-based. This is the essence of the relevance of diversion programs in meeting the needs of children in conflict with the law, in that they allow the children to remain with their families. The community-based nature of the programs also lets CICL know that they are people in a community whose residents care about them. Diversions, diversion is an important part of the restorative justice introduced by the Juvenile Justice Welfare Act. The law calls for restorative justice to be incorporated into all laws, policies, and programs applicable to children in conflict with the law. As a matter of principle, restorative justice requires the process of resolving conflicts with the maximum involvement of the victim, the offender, and the community. It seeks to obtain reparation from the victim, reconciliation of the offender, the offended, and the community, and reassurance to the offender that he or she can be reintegrated into society. It also enhances public safety by engaging the offender, the victim, and the community in preventing or in prevention strategies. According to the law, there are two types of diversion procedures. The first one includes diversion procedures facilitated at the level of the barangay, the local social welfare and development office, police, or prosecutor, which are outlined in the Juvenile Justice Welfare Act. Juvenile Justice Welfare Act of Section 23 provides that individuals that individuals responsible for responding to crime by young offenders shall conduct mediation, family conferencing, and conciliation, and where appropriate, adopt the indigenous modes of conflict resolution in accordance with the best interest of the child in conflict with a view of accomplishing the objectives of our restorative justice and the formulation of a diversion program. The other diversion process is facilitated by the court at the community level for crimes that are punishable by six years of imprisonment and below. The court diversion process is utilized at the discretion of the judge and facilitated by the court diversion community by the Court Diversion Committee. UNIS, UNICEF began providing assistance to the Philippines in 1948. The juvenile justice reform in the Philippines is in line with the UNICEF main focus on global juvenile justice programming 
which emphasizes the reduction of the number of children held in police custody, pre-trial detention, prisons, and juvenile rehabilitation centers. The role of UNICEF Philippines has been to support the drafting of an advocacy for the passage of Republic Act 9344, as well as to assist government-run centers for CICL by offering capacity building activities to social workers and center authorities and providing supplies for technical and vocational skills training as well as other recreational activities for the children. One of the SWD's primary responsibilities as the chair and as a member of the Juvenile Justice Welfare Council, an interagency body tasked to coordinate the implementation of juvenile intervention programs in the country is to establish and maintain the regional rehabilitation centers for youth. The RRCY is a 24-hour residential center for the rehabilitation of youth offenders below 18 years of age whose sentences have been suspended. It also serves as a nurturing out-of home placement for children in need of rehabilitation. Several RRCY were already in existence before the enactment of the Juvenile Justice Welfare Act actually. In October 2013, the Congress of the Philippines enacted Republic Act 10630, an act strengthening the juvenile justice system in the Philippines for the purpose of amending Republic Act 9344. The the establishment of an intensive juvenile intervention and support center for children under the minimum age of criminal responsibility in the Baja minimum re responsibility in the Bahay Pag-asa is one of the key enhancements in the law. The Bahay Pag-asa is a 24-hour residential facility that provides temporary care and serves as a rehabilitation center for CICL with pending cases as opposed to putting them in jails and with the goal of eventually reintegrating them with their families. The amended law also provides for the allocation of 400 million pesos that will be coursed through the Department of Public Works and Highways to fund the construction of Bahay Pag-asa facilities in identified priority local government units by the Juvenile Justice Welfare Council. Republic Act 10630 further clarified RA 8 further clarified RA 9344's requirement for the local government units to allocate 1% of their internal revenue allotment for the mandatory development and integration of the local comprehensive juvenile intervention program. It provided that highly urbanized cities and provincial governments should include a separate budget for the construction and maintenance, revised and maintenance of the Bahay Pag-asa including the operation of the IGISC within the Bahay Pag-asa. Under the revised law, the specific treatment, process, and intervention program to be administered to children who committed a crime but cannot be criminally charged is made clear. This is to ensure that the children are made aware of their accountability and to display any misconception that erring children are not held liable for their actions. To what extent are the programs, the residential and diversion implemented, supported by the DSWD and UNICEF relevant? Or how do they contribute to the overall national juvenile justice and welfare policy framework and to the broader rule of law and justice sector reform agenda implemented in the Philippines? The programs, let us answer that. The programs under evaluation were designed with the intent of contributing to the overall national juvenile justice and welfare policy framework in the Philippines as the chairperson of the Philippines Commission on Human Rights already pointed out when the Juvenile Justice Welfare Act was enacted in 2006, the law can improve the delivery of justice for the youth and likewise improve the justice system 
as a whole. These programs have demonstrated complete alignment with the overall juvenile justice and rule of law reform agenda in the country. Based on the JJWA, the Juvenile Justice Welfare Council was created as an interagency lead council to oversee and ensure that the national laws and international instruments ratified by the Philippine government in the area of juvenile justice are implemented and enforced by its members and its coordinating agencies. The core function of the JJWC is to develop, update, they are to develop, update, and enhance a three to five year comprehensive juvenile justice intervention program. The comprehensive juvenile justice intervention program incorporates the principles of restorative justice and emphasizes rehabilitation and reintegration rather than retribution. For children committing crimes that are punishable by a sentence of six years and below, clearly the rehabilitation and diversion programs under this evaluation are the remedial pillar of the say JJIT, which aims to restore the functioning state of CICL, repair the damages created as a result of his or her offense, and preventing reoffending. In addition, juvenile justice is an important component of an effective criminal justice system, and children's rights are an inter are uh, integral part of human rights. As a result, the rehabilitation and diversion programs under evaluation are important indicators of the achievement of the rule of law in the Philippines. The programs under evaluation are also with the welfare policy framework in the country. Article 2 of the Philippine Constitution provides that the state recognizes the vital role of the youth in nation building and shall promote and protect their physical, moral, spiritual, intellectual, and social well-being. The programs under evaluation operate within a child-focused framework. At the center of the programs is the child, as the goals of the programs are the fulfillment of his or her rights and ensuring that he or she is not in conflict with the law. Such programs focus on the child and his or her family as an immediate support system. The community is helped to support the rehabilitation process of the child and the family. Moving on, how relevant are the center-based intervention and rehabilitation programs to the UNICEF's overall response to emergencies and the child protection program? CACL used to be a focus of the work of UNICEF. However, in recent years, UNICEF has shifted from an issue-based to a system-based approach in programming and aims to provide a broader influence in the juvenile justice system. Now it focuses on all children in the justice program. This, uh, this new approach has been reflected in its training for the police and social workers, such as on strategies to handle child victims, nonetheless, the center-based intervention and rehabilitation programs can still benefit from this new approach as UNICEF training for the stakeholders in child protection is still based on child-sensitive social protection. A child-sensitive lens would help the duty bearers in CICL cases to better analyze the context of CICL identify their needs of those other complainants or victims and formulate responses with consideration of the child's interest. For the effectiveness, to what extent and how have the expected results of the programs been achieved or to what extent have the DSWD and UNICEF been able to influence the effective delivery of intervention and rehabilitation programs in facilities managed of uh, managed or operated by the non-government offices and local government units. First, 
most CICL are able to continue their formal schooling at the institutions or facilities. All the all the RRCYs and the BPAs provide education to the CICL by partnering with local educational institutions. For the majority of CICL, they are able to continue their formal schooling through the alternative learning system of the DepEd, which is offered at the institution in which they reside. For a small number of CICL with good performance at the facilities, they are allowed to study in nearby schools. Second, some CICL are able to attend vocational training programs. The skill trainings provided in the programs under evaluation mostly focus on the following trades, welding, carpentry, masonry, cooking, bakery, and jewelry and accessory making. Some facilities offer training at different levels and award certificates to CICL when they satisfy the requirement for a certain level. In addition, most facilities have established stable referral arrangements with local job providers for potential job placements. Focused group discussions with the CICL and their caregivers demonstrate that through skills training, CACL are prepared for independent living, both at the level of skills and confidence after being discharged. Finally, the residential programs are effective at reshaping the behavior of the CICL through various spiritual, value formation, and recreational activities. Many CICL regain basic rehabilitation skills such as following proper hygiene, housekeeping, table manners, and better interpersonal skills such as respect, tolerance, patience, kindness, humility. And lastly is the time management. Almost all the CICL and their guardians have observed one or more of the following positive changes since the CICL's admission to the program better understanding of past behavior, better management of anger, and learning how to pray and developing leadership skills. To what extent have the programs contributed to the effectiveness of UNICEF's Child Protection Program? The programs have effectively contributed to UNICEF's Child Protection Program. Indeed, although UNICEF does not maintain a direct relationship with the facilities or programs, the agency provides technical assistance and capacity building for the DSWD and even material equipment in some cases. UNICEF also attends the meetings of different networks where it provides technical advice. This type of technical assistance is much valued by stakeholders as it brings more effectiveness than simply providing funding. Bringing international good practices to influence policy making, UNICEF conducted advocacy and lobbed from the enactment of the Juvenile Justice Welfare Act as well as research on children aged 9 to 15 years of age. The agency likewise supported pilot diversion programs with the city government and non-government in Cebu, strengthened law enforcement by sharing good practices with the Women and Children's Protection Desk of the PNP, developed juvenile justice indicators, and trained the Bureau of Jail Management and Penology on data collection and usage. Now let us moving forward, moving forward to the efficiency. What interventions and services are the most efficient in meeting the needs of CICL? Actually, estimates of the cost per capita per type of intervention and service are very difficult to obtain. If, however, if the government focuses on strengthening the community-based diversion programs under the barangays of a municipality or city, cost efficiency will thus be promoted. At the same time, the main goal of the law of local intervention and rehabilitation will be achieved. A strong Barangay Child Protection Council is a pillar of effective and working community-based programs. Without a functional BCPC, 
the Municipal Social Welfare and Development Office will have a hard time coordinating with each barangay in providing diversion and after care programs to the CICL in the community. Through a network of government, agencies, and stakeholders, the barangay is able to handle diversion cases at a cost-efficient number. For the, let us go to the relevance, effectiveness, efficiency, sustainability of the rehabilitation and reformation programs. All of the programs that were mentioned earlier are found to be relevant in meeting the needs of CICL in the areas of healthcare, education, skills, security and safety, and spiritual and value formation. They are also relevant to the aim of bringing Philippine juvenile justice law and practice into compliance with international conventions. Two salient examples are the provision of the principal and procedures for diversion and the minimum age of criminal responsibility. These programs also contribute to the overall national justice and welfare, welfare reform by creating a child-friendly juvenile justice system. The residential and diversion programs under this have clearly reflected the human rights-based approach to development. However, significant gaps still exist in meeting international conventions. Uh, in meeting international conventions, rights, protection, standards, the full implementation of the law, especially in the diversion programs, and adequate compliance at the local level are not satisfactory. All of these realities take place against the backdrop of a shift in the focus of UNICEF from an issue-based to a system-based approach, a serious challenge confronting the programs under this evaluation in the near future is how to further establish the relevance to the overall child protection strategies at the local level and sustain the attention of major international technical assistance provisions. Moving on to the effectiveness and effects of the programs under the juvenile justice system, considerable evidence has shown that most programs provide an enabling environment for the rehabilitation and reintegration of CACL. Through these programs, a large proportion of children are being diverted out of the formal criminal justice system, which inevitably avoids the negative social and psychological impacts of labeling these children as criminals. Most CICL are able to continue their formal educations schooling through the programs in which they participate. Some CICL are able to attend vocational training programs, interviews with parents and children confirm changes in the behavior of the CIEL. Some factors are identified as negatively affecting the rehabilitation and reintegration of CICL in a significant way, which can turn into facilitating factors if handled properly. They include the delayed court proceedings, which has resulted in the prolonged stay of CICL in detention institutions or other facilities before they are officially admitted into the rehabilitation, intervention, or diversion programs. Second, the lack of implementation of required customized intervention for CICL, which has limited the effectiveness of the programs. Third, the insufficient capacity of the juvenile justice actors. See, for example, the social workers, the police, prosecutors, and judges. Lastly is the weak commitment from the local government unit, which has significantly affected the implementation of programs for CICL at the local level. Now, moving on to the efficiency of the rehabilitation and reformation programs. Generally speaking, the RRC-wise are better funded 
compared to other programs due to stable support from the DSWD. By contrast, the funding for the Bahay Pag-asas mainly comes from the local government unit budget, while non-government offices run programs depend heavily on donations. Due to low compliance at the local level, the number of Bahay Pag-asas and community-based programs are still not enough on the ground that some RRCYs and BPAs have established an agreement to host CICL on a cost-sharing basis. For the sustainability, Bahay Pag-asas and non-government offices run facilities are facing more sustainability challenges than the RRCYs. At the local level, with the amendment of the Juvenile Justice Welfare Act, the responsibility of the local government units has been further clarified. As of today, of the 81 provinces, 15 have been able to establish a Bahay Pag-asa in partnership with the DSWD or the Juvenile Justice Welfare Council. And as for highly urbanized cities, only a handful have been able to comply with Section 49 of their Public Act 10630. The accountability system at the local government level determines whether or not the budget items given to the CICL will be adequately considered and consequently whether both the skills and the workload of local social workers and house parents can be maintained at a reasonable level. The stability of staff at the regional level Say, for example, staff working in the programs and other duty bearers requires that people with proper training on CICL stay in their positions for an extended period of time to avoid frequent turnover or reassignment. So, that's all for my final report. So, that's all for my final report. I am Mabel Fukasan and my report was based from the final report of the evaluation of the intervention and rehabilitation program in residential facilities and diversion programs for CICL leaded by Sadis Shinshin Yang. You can also access the site from the UNICEF.